Hello again. Welcome back to the village. I, today, I wanted to touch on a subject that I touched on in the last video. I'll be going more in depth on automation, and today, for as an example, we're going to make some good old-fashioned potage. From the seed all the way up to the entire process made in the kitchen. Now, in order to do this, we're going to have to work backwards to give you a real idea on how this process works. But if you get this set up properly, you will never have to make a single food item. You will never have to do any kind of farming. You will never have to go out and chop wood, except maybe every once in a while, you know, to make tools. But even the tools can be automated. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to the kitchen and we're going to go find the potage. It uses raw meat, cabbage, and a wooden bowl. So we have to we have to be able to produce those three items. The first one is easy, cabbage. Cabbage can be planted twice a year. I think once in the spring and once again in the summer. Harvested both in summer and fall. So you're always going to have lots of cabbage. I have a patch, I believe, planted right here. Meat, you're going to get from your hunting lodge or by hunting yourself. You can also gain meat by placing traps. Rabbit traps, bird traps, or rat traps all give you raw meat. The workshop, you're going to need to make the bowls. So let's look at this process on, on, the, on the menu here. I'm going to go over. We need the production kitchen. And then if you remember this tab from last time with the wood shop, click on it. And here's everything that you have. Now, don't despair if there's items that have a little uh, padlock next to it. It just means you haven't bought the Ingram or the recipe yet. And you have to go buy it in the technology menu. So first thing we want to do is let's make potage. Like I said, we need these. Let's we could raise that up. Let's raise that to 5%. Let's raise it to 1% for example purposes. So we have potage. It needs cabbage meat and bowl. So let's go find meat. Hunting. And go to the hunting lodge. Boom, now we get now we're getting meat. Now we want to go to the crops. Now there's a, there's a, its own special tab. It's this one up here. And we want to go to the the field that has the vegetables. Now this is not been yet planted because my workers haven't gotten to it yet. However, it will be planted soon. So I have cabbage being planted. Now I'll have to wait a season before, you know, obviously before that's harvested. But I have some some backup cabbages inside of my food storage. So we've got cabbages growing. We've got meat. Now we need to make bowls. That's inside of here. Let's go to the workshop. And now we're going to scroll down to bowl. And we're going to produce bowl. Now wooden bowls require logs. So that means we're going to now have to go to our extraction. And to the woodshed. And we're going to have to make sure that we're producing logs, which we are. We're still producing logs like we were last time. Good. This means that your work, your work shed, your woodshed will get the logs. The people in your workshop will make bowls. The farmers will harvest the cabbage and your hunters will bring in meat. And once all those ingredients are together, the kitchen will cook them into potage without you having to lift a finger. Now, one, one little, one little add-on to this is you're going to have to make sure that there's tools. The hunting lodge uses knives. Of course, you have the bowls, which is what the was what they do. I don't believe this. Yeah, this does the workshop does not use any tools. The kitchen only is going to require the bowls. So really, we just got to make sure we have stone knives. Now, how do we make stone knives? You go to the smithy. Boom. Now you need sticks, a hammer, and stone. So we're also going to have to be producing hammers. We're also going to have to be producing stones as well because we're already producing sticks. So now we got to go to the excavation shed. 
and boom. All right. As of now, this is set up so that it, so that I will slowly produce stone knives, and the hunting lodge will use those stone knives to get meat. The farmers will, you don't have to mess with this, um, they will produce cabbage. And once all that's produced, the workshop will make a bowl. And then once the bowl and everything's put together, the kitchen will cook it. You can do this process with everything. I find it's easier to follow it from the item that you want to make and work your way backwards. Uh, you, there is a problem with overproduction in this game. When you get towards the end, you will fill up your storages. I suggest you keep a, a tight grip on the control of these numbers when you get towards the mid to late game because you don't want to you don't want to run, to wake up to your storage is full and no firewood because they couldn't produce firewood because the storage is full it could put it in and they have no more axes there's just so many problems that can occur but it really isn't a problem until you get towards the end of the game so play around with them try them out um, practice makes perfect your village may require differently an example of how I operate my village differently is often and throughout most of the game, I will be the person who does all of the farming. I will plant, harvest, sow, I will fertilize the fields, I will do all of that. Now, I don't like going out and gathering trees, I don't like gathering stones, little work like that, so I have them automate that, and I will often have myself be the farmer. Now, now that I'm at the end game, I have them doing the farming. But early on, I do all the farming. So that may be a set of system you like. You may be, you may like cutting trees all day and just have them do the farming. It's really up to you how to automate this process. But it is possible for your village to be completely sufficient without you. You just have to put in the time and effort. Now, there is another, a couple of more things I wanted to go through. That's more advanced. Um, things that you will not, you will have later on in the game are the stalls these stalls these resource stalls let me show you what they look like here we are good old resource stall this thing will allow you to passively sell items that are in your storage and you can make a lot of money this way right here each stall can hold only one type so right here is just raw resources stall here is herbs and potions. The stall here is food. We have clothing. So you can, so if you have an excess of linen and wool like I will inevitably have, a lot of wool, I don't need to make any clothes, but I can still make them and then have this guy sell them and make money off of them. This is for weapons and tools, so if you have an excessive amount of iron like I do, I can make a bunch of tools and then put them up for sale. This is the late game way to supply your village with money, and as you get into late game, you will need a lot. My village pulls probably about 5,000 in taxes every year for its size. And, th and for somebody just starting out in the game, that is it. That is a, whew, that is a hefty amount. As you will, as it's very hard to make money early in the game unless you know all your little tricks and Hopefully I'll come out with a video on how to make money early game. That would be very helpful for a lot of people. Now you know all of the boxes that you need to check to make sure that your process is fully automated and works. I hope that you never have to lift a finger again once you reach the end game. Or at the very least, I hope that you are able to customize the game and tailor it to play the way that you want. But that's all for now. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you guys next time.